What's up everybody, John here from ContraBIM and I've been wanting to do a detailed video here on the new Archicad 25 uh, casework objects for a while now and that's what we're going to cover today in this video. I actually went ahead and wrote a really detailed blog kind of going through a lot of the new settings and some of the quirks of the new tools but I thought in this video today we would kind of just go through do kind of an overview of the new objects and then also dive into the main settings of the new um, casework objects. Now, of course, we can use these objects for kitchen cabinets. We can use them in the uh, bathrooms as vanities. Uh, obviously, in laundry, we can use them in um, closets, too, if you wanted to. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of different uh, uses. And so let's go ahead and jump into it, and we'll kind of run through the main settings here. So uh, I do want to just kind of start out by, you know, talking about the new objects that are available. And so let's just kind of look take a look here at the listing. So this has actually changed a decent amount from version 24 and previous. They've actually gone through and they cut out a lot of the cabinets or the combo units, I should say, that included like ovens and sinks. Um, so those objects are no longer and they've really kind of rebuilt these so that we have a new kind of grouping of base cabinets. Uh, we'll mainly be talking about the base cabinet block 25 today, but there's also a chamfered version, there's a corner unit, there's an L unit, there's an S unit, which kind of cuts off that edge, uh, there's an end unit, and... Sorry, there's two different end units, one that's open and one that's closed. There is a new countertop. Um, I have noticed the countertop is a little bit different setup than the rest of the casework object settings. So we won't go into that one in much detail today, but uh, I believe that's kind of more like the previous version 24. Uh, and then we have standing cabinets. So we have the standing uh, base block. We have the chamfered unit. There, and then there's the uh, the corner unit, so the C, the L, and the S, and then again we have the uh, the shelving and the open shelving, and then we pretty much have the same repeating objects for the walls, so the block, chamfered, C corner, L corner, S corner, and then the shelving unit. So they've simplified the the objects a little bit now, um, just in terms of you know the number of objects that we have to work with. But they've definitely gone in and they've added a lot of new uh, settings here. And you actually notice as I'm clicking through these, we're jumping to the default settings, uh, kind of you know built into the objects, which not which don't necessarily contain the settings that I would prefer to actually start with. And so in that case, I'm going to kind of cancel out of this and we can go through and, um, you know, kind of start with an object that I've already been working on. Um, just in general, one tip to note when setting up these objects um, is definitely useful to kind of lay them out here and go through all the settings and tweak them a bit. Uh, because when you do that, um, you can kind of get rid of the default settings in the um, in the object settings you know themselves and then you can you can really go through and start dialing in the settings for everything from counters um, like now when i turn on my counter it's automatically going to jump to the style that i want um, and you know the knobs the footings everything you can really go through and dial in the settings on and um, that way when you go and make site modifications it's going to uh, be a little bit easier to use so okay let's just um Let's just do like a kind of a quick fly through here now of some of the objects that I already have placed. And then we will proceed to really jump into the settings and we'll go through and explore all the different features. So, um, so yeah, I've laid out here really like, uh, I think I have 10 different variations here on just like a, a one foot wide cabinet. Um, you can see here in this uh, object, uh, we really have kind of a simplified face turned on. So, um, if we go here to our front panel, front panel settings, you can see this would just be using a solid face with kind of a very simple uh, cylinder knob. Um, if we move on, you can see we're using different styles of uh, front paneling here. Uh, so this would be one style that 
um, obviously has kind of like a mitered corner versus one that's joined, uh, you know, more square. Uh, you can also notice that these front panels are covering the carcass versus this one. They're actually inset. Um, so that, yeah, there's really a lot of different options here now. Um, we have a lot of different handle styles. We have different face styles for um, kind of having a louvered style. We have different handle options for edge conditions. Um, and there's also some cool new handles that are kind of built in profiles. So let's take a look at some of these here because these are, uh, you know, some pretty cool new features. So yeah, you can see here that we have some uh, edge handles. Uh, this would be one of the new, um, uh, I can't remember what they called that setting here, but let's, let's jump in and see. I think it's like the beveled bull nose. Um, we can find that here under our new knobs and yeah, you can see it's the bottle nose. So I think some of these others are beveled or OG, which have open backs versus the bull nose, which kind of closes things there on the front face, which is a pretty common um, more modern style cabinet. Um, but yeah, there's lots of different settings. There's, um, you can adjust the inset panel versus the frame to get, um, you know, a clear look, or you can create different grids. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of different settings here. And uh, yes, it's been fun playing around with them. Uh, definitely go and check out the blog where we really kind of explore all the ins and outs of the different features. Um, but yeah, with that, let's go ahead and um, yeah, you can kind of see just, you know, the, the base uh, cabinets that I've laid out here. You can see the different variations of C, L, and S for the full heights the bases and the walls. So it's just nice to get these dialed in so that when you go to start working with them, uh, they are easy to use. Um, I have noticed with these shelves, there are some uh, different settings that you can adjust here for the corner type. So you can make them square. I think by default, they're going to be kind of this uh, just chamfered version, uh, but you can make them nice and radius, which I think looks a little better. You can even add in supports here. So that can be, um, a nice feature as well and you can just kind of start thinking about other uses for where this would apply beyond the typical uh, casework cabinets so okay with that let's um yeah let's go ahead and i'd like to jump into kind of an object that i have placed here off to the side and what we'll do now is we will run through the settings of this um this base block, um, which is probably the most commonly used type of uh, object that we will encounter. And yeah, with that, let's just, we'll go ahead and start running through the settings. But first thing that I want to point out here is we have a lot of new nodes here in 3D. Um, so we have new nodes here for segmentation. So we can take this and drag this up and down. We have new nodes here for our uh, knob handles. So we can pull this in and out as well as up and down. Those will kind of work symmetrically there, uh, which is nice. Um, with our single drawer, you can see how we can just move this around. Um, and yeah, there's other settings here as well. We have a setting here for our width stretch. We can also, let's see if we can, you know, we can adjust, well, I guess that's just the height there so that's not adjusting the footing height but this is adjusting kind of our base elevation point um but yeah just lots of different settings and let's kind of start the discussion here of diving into the settings if i can exit out of this command come on there we go um by going in and just kind of talking about the nominal size of our object so let's jump into our object settings here and we'll just kind of start at the top of the list I'm going to hide all of those and yeah we'll just start with our nominal size so um, with the new base blocks um, we really have a, the option of choosing either our carcass or our cabinet as our nominal size so you'll notice right now we're currently set to our carcass and this is actually uh, my preferred method for defining the size uh, because typically I'll want to set this as like an even two feet which is 
uh, to essentially this point right here. So it's to the node that um, sits on the carcass box itself. So if we select this, you can see that the node is located right there. And if we do a quick measurement, this point to that point is exactly two feet, which is what we wanted. And of course, the width is going to be uh, what we want. So if we switch that over actually to the cabinet size, then you can see that it already added that two foot three quarters inch to our object, uh, which is good, but you would uh, you definitely want to uh, just consider if you're using your cabinet as a nominal size, this includes the door. So you'll notice how that node is going to move over here now, and it's going to now be on the front versus on um, on the carcass there. So I would definitely, uh, I, I prefer using the carcass method, but if you're using the cabinet, make sure that you understand the door uh, thickness is going to be included in that. The other thing that I want to point out here in terms of just our nominal size is the height. So this two foot six and a half here, um, that is the height of the box. So that does not include the, hook, the footing height, but um, you will see here um, if we go to our footing, we have a footing set at four inches. And actually, um, I can see that I potentially I messed something up in this object here. This height here should equal the same height that we have to our project zero. So let's just inspect this real quick and then we'll go in and we'll correct that. So, um, so with our object as it is here, if we take this and if we move it up and down, well, I can see that it's actually set how I wanted it to be, which is kind of funny because as I've been playing with this before, um, that point there, maybe it's because I was grabbing it and potentially stretching it up and down. Um, but what I found is our elevation. I can actually see that it's already been set back to uh, four inches there. So that's it's a little... It's a little bit quirky there, but what I have noticed is the height of the box we will set differently or independently from the height, including, yeah, I can see that that jumped back to four inches without me changing the height of it at all. So that's that's kind of interesting. But um, yeah, we would take that four inches, add it on top of this two foot six and a half to get to two foot ten and a half, which is our standard height of cabinets here, at least in the U.S., and um, so yeah, we have to add those two together to get our total height here. Our total height right here is uh, not inclusive of the footing. So, all right, that is kind of the first uh, setting here for our nominal size. Uh, next up is our segments. So uh, we can add up to five segments within our element here. And uh, just a quick note, when you are playing with these segments, um, and if you're making adjustments, it's going to uh, definitely not remember your previous selection there. So whatever you had there before, it's not going to remember. And you can actually see that our knobs are now all thrown off and it's probably defaulting back to, um, to like a door, I would think, for that one. So I'm going to go back and kind of set these settings. And um, yeah, we'll jump into our next setting here, which is our detailed, uh, sorry, segment details. Um, of course, we could click this. I just want to point out that we can make these equal heights if we wanted to, but in most cases, we'll probably want to, um, you know, if it was a door with a drawer on top, then we'd probably want to, you know, adjust those size, obviously. So, okay, let's go into the next dialog, which is the segment details. And within here, we can either choose to have uniform functions or not. Um, which is actually funny here because, well, yeah, we, we just, I think by having these uniform functions here, we can't make them, we can make them both drawers or or whatever we select here is going to apply to both. It doesn't really make that much sense in this case. But um, I do want to point out that our segment one is always going to be on the bottom. So if we wanted to set this back to our doors and we have several different options here for doors, we can, um, you know, play around with these to either be, you know, side hung or mirrored, top hung or bottom hung. You can see how we're moving the knob around based on that. Double hung would be like a two door uh, 
option. Um, that would be probably the most common for a cabinet this size. Uh, but we do have some options for sliding, which may not make a whole lot of sense, or mirrored sliding, or the bifold options, or the bifold lift up as well. So that would obviously be more applicable in the case of like a wall cabinet. But okay, let's go back to our default or kind of our you know, more typical arrangement, which would be a double hung. Um, of course, we have our number of inner segments here, so that's how many shelves we have uh, with their thickness. And then, of course, we have our segment two, which in this case is a drawer. We could make it open if we wanted. That's another option. We could make it a panel, which would be like a scenario potentially underneath a sink where you just want to have a kind of a notch out panel. Um, or potentially if... Um, you had a fold down there you would set it as a door and like a bottom hung would be a way to just make that fold open which you could have potentially in front of a sink um okay so let's set this back to a drawer and we'll kind of we'll continue on here through our settings to the next dialog so our components so this is really where we can turn on and off all the different settings within our object. So we can turn on our counter, and there you can see that we've jumped back to kind of like our default, um, or like a nice granite uh, surface there. We can turn on a sink, and we can turn on and off the tap there, and we can turn on and off the backsplash. So you'll notice as I'm turning all these options on, uh, really it doesn't look too bad right out of the gate. It actually looks pretty good and well defined and the reason for that is because I've already gone through and uh, messed with the settings um, within this object so that when I go and turn those options on it's going to be set really to the default settings that I would uh, like to use. Um, so that's one thing that's just kind of across the board uh, useful to just go through and set up all the settings for these elements regardless of whether you're, you're going to use them in uh, the ultimate layout or not. Um, it does save a little bit of time on the back end. Um, another example of that is if we go into the settings here and say if we switch over like our footing, um, typically when adding, you know, using the, the base block footing, that's no problem. That's always really easy to apply. But adding in either the cylinders or the square sizing. Typically, these would not come in exactly how we would want. Um, I've actually already gone through and set these up so that when I turn them on, um, they're already in the, in the right location based on the width of this particular cabinet. But if you start making changes here, like if we even go to two feet, you'll see that all of a sudden our footing settings are not set correctly for this particular cabinet and therefore we would have to go in and start making adjustments again. So there's a lot that we can pre-program into these object settings so that they work, but there's definitely some limitations here and um, hopefully in future object releases or updates from Graphisoft, they'll be able to get these uh, elements to kind of stick to their position a little better for the footings and the knobs as well. So, all right, let's cancel out of that and we will kind of continue um, working through this. Um, you'll notice here that obviously the the knobs have kind of been reset back to their original uh, default position here and so that's again one of those things where when you start making changes knobs are always going to be jumping back um, not always but most of the time they will be jumping back and once you kind of determine the size of your box and the size of your doors then you can kind of jump into these little dialogues and set them back to the position that um, you know works pretty well with your your objects there. So, okay, let's continue on within our object settings. So, um, next up here under our components, and you'll see over on this side, the majority of the settings here are within the components dialogs. We're just going to leave them open for the moment, but let's take a look at our counter settings. So, one of the cool things with the new counter feature in the ArchiCAD 25. Uh, objects is the option for setting the edge profile. So we can either use a square edge, we can, let's see if we can get this um, a side view. Oh, I went too far. Um, it might be a little small to see. You can see it barely there. Um, probably a 3D view would look 
maybe better. But um, what's nice with this, oh, sorry, that's one other thing I wanted to point out. Uh, before, when you were rotating the casework objects, it would relate that to the rotation angle in your model as well. That's one thing that they've fixed now so that we can rotate these and see our objects from the front and the back without having to go back and reset the position in our plan view, which uh, was always a pain. Um, and so that's one thing that's kind of freed us to be able to rotate these freely in the preview without impacting its position in our project. Okay, sorry, I've getting a little sidetracked there. So yeah, on these counters, we now have the option of choosing different uh, edge conditions, whether we want to have just like, uh, I think there's names that will pop up here. Square, this is, oh yeah, we can see it on this preview here under our more detailed counter settings. So that's eased, square, this is a beveled, this is a double radius, and then a half bull nose and a full bull nose there. Um, so yeah, lots of new options um, here. Um, one thing that I want to point out relating to the counters is this overhang um, in the front. So this one inch overhang, this is actually um, set from the face of our doors, not the face of our carcass. So even though we were using our carcass as setting our nominal size, the uh, the counter overhang here is going to be based off the front of the door panels or drawer panels versus the nominal position that we set. So I just want to point that out. You'll also notice here that we have lost that node. When you turn on the counters, it's automatically going to set that node to the outside of the counter. So I uh, just wanted to point that out also. Um, okay, let's jump back into the settings and we'll kind of continue on discussing our different options. So of course we can set different overhangs on each different side here. Um, we can actually turn on and off under our representation here, our counter visibility. So um, right now we currently don't have our contours turned on. So if we turn these, or sorry, we do have them turned on, but we can either turn them on and off uh, if we chose to do so by activating these settings. Um, but let's jump back into our counter. And yeah, I think that's it for our base settings. Uh, of course, we have our backsplash settings here as well. There's a rectangular versus a uh, triangle option. Um, I don't really know where the triangle option would come into play, potentially, um, if you wanted to add just a little, you know, chamfer to it with a backsplash behind it, perhaps. I'm not sure, um, but I think the rectangular is going to be more common. And of course, we can add it on whatever sides we desire. So, okay, that's our countertop. Let's dive into our sink settings. So with the sinks, we have our three different options, a rectangular, a circular, and also the Belfast style. Um, within each of these, we can either choose a sink. We have lots of different styles to, to pick from, or we can actually just make an opening as well if we wanted to add in some sort of custom sink. So we do have some flexibility there. Um, you'll notice as I'm going through, we've lost that front panel. So that is one of the many little glitches here in our element. Um, if we turn off and on our sink, it does not bring it back. So yeah, that's just one of those things that as you're playing with these settings, you're gonna find that you're gonna have to go back in and you're gonna have to go and set that to the correct uh, location. But because it was a sink, we didn't want to draw there anyway, and so we probably just want to sit that as a panel. Um, but yes, again, one of those little quirks that we have to play with. So, all right, another thing to pay attention to, uh, I would say most counters these days are going to be an undermount, if, certainly if you have some sort of stone finish or you know, nicer counter finish. Um, that's not in every single case. Um, if it was an, an, you know, a regular sink that's mounted on top, then obviously we would see the edge there. But with an undermount, um, you'll notice here, if we leave our overhang to zero, it's going to be sizing the cutout 
in our counter based on the overall size of kind of the flange on the top of that sink. So that's not right at all. Um, we actually have some nodes here where we can grab these points um, and we can pull it all the way in. That would be one way of adjusting the both sides and the front at the same time. And there's also a node here in the back where we can do that same thing and just pull it all the way over. So that's one way of uh, getting that to uh, correct itself. The other way would just be to come into the overlap settings and we could just plug in like one foot and one foot and max those out and it'll jump back to those kind of default. Sorry, these overall settings there. Um, or those maximum settings, I should say, for matching the opening of the sink itself. Okay, so those are some important settings to pay attention to. Um, another one that I've found that's pretty important is this option right here, which is currently set to negative two inches. Um, so let's just go ahead and let's just update this object and we'll take a look at how um, it's coming through. So yeah, our offset in this direction here, which I believe is this node, we can grab this one and we can offset it back and forth. If we set this, say, to like, a, I'm gonna try to jump into our little palette there. If we go to like minus three inches, you'll notice that we'll start actually picking up the cabinet within there. So that's something that we'll want to pay attention to. Also, I found that the, at least for this size of sink, that uh, two inch offset in the negative direction um, works out pretty well. Um, it's a little better than I'd say having this at like a, a zero offset, which would put this sink pretty much right in the middle of our cabinet. And that leaves like a big ledge here and you have to reach further to get into it. So um, yeah, having it pulled forward makes a little more sense. Um, okay, let's continue on. There's a lot of other settings here. Um, I do want to point out that there are some cases where you can rotate. Um, for a square box like this, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense in this case, but um, I don't know, perhaps you can find a scenario where if it was in, say, like the corner of a bathroom, then potentially it would be a little more user-friendly to have it rotated. I don't know. Um, we also have the a handle here for rotating our tap as well. Um, it's kind of interesting. The preview on that tap jumps back to a different type of uh, of tap. Hopefully it doesn't default back to that one. Yeah, it didn't. That's good. Um, but yeah, we do have nodes here for kind of pushing and pulling our tap as well. And so lots of new uh, handles for adjusting these objects. Okay, let's move on to our next uh, setting here, which is going to be, yeah, I guess this is our tap setting. So again, we can go through and plug in all these different types. Um, we already talked about the different sync types. We do have, um, I believe most of these, these taps were uh, the same as um, in the previous versions, some of these look new to me potentially, um, but I don't know. They could have been there before, um, but yeah, you can see the different styles and um, yeah, feel free to go through and choose the one that fits your sinks the best. All right, that's it for our counters and our sinks. Um, I'm actually going to go through here. Let's jump back to our component settings and I'm just going to turn off all of this. So we are getting rid of our counter and we'll just kind of go back and focus again on the box itself. So our front panels. So this, op this dialogue here has some different options that we can uh, go in and set um, for one, I'd say most of the time we'll want to be working with uniform styled panels. Uh, that does save a little bit of time. I would say it'll take the style of our segment one and whatever that style is, we'll apply it based on uh, checking that option. Um, here's where we can adjust our thickness if needed. Uh, you can do some offsets here, but I believe these offsets only work in the direction going outside of the box. Um, I don't believe we can plug in a negative here if we wanted to expose the face 
of that a little bit, but still have an overhanging uh, door or drawer. So yeah, those will only function in that direction. Um, you can see once again, we've screwed up our knobs just by changing uh, those settings. Um, but we do have some other options here as well for our positioning. So we can set these as an inset, which will take those and inset them within the frame of our carcass. We can do an overlay, which will take our um, dividers and uh, split those evenly. Or we can do an align to uh, shelf here, which I believe will uh, take the bottom segment and align it or adjust the top of that over the top of the shelf. So most of the time I'm leaving this as, just as an overlay. Okay, let's jump into our next setting here, which is of course our panel setting. So we have lots of different options here um, and we have kind of a you know, solid option with either vertical frames or horizontal frames um, or this mosaic, which um, really for me, I haven't found a whole lot of uh, benefit of that. I don't know, maybe maybe there is, but um, yeah, for me, if I'm using this, I'll probably just go straight with the solid. Um, and we also have some framed panels. So uh, the full framed is what we were using there previously. You can see as we change our joinery type, the contour lines will show up there in our object preview, which actually that's a setting in our work environment that's important to turn on um, when working with these case, casework objects. I'll show you where that is here once we exit out of this dialogue. But yeah, you can either go with the, uh, the mitered there or kind of the, the flat cut. Um, you can also change your bevel on the panels here. So you can either go square or um, chamfered or radius, and of course we can set our width there as well for our frame which is obviously the thickness of let's do a little preview here thickness of the outside element so one and a half to two inches I would say is a good uh, common uh, thickness on those um, you can see we have some grayed out options down below here for our mullion width so we'll get those, not when we go to the inset, but when we go to our mullions, we can actually start going through and determining the size on those. Um, we can, of course, set that back to a clear if we wanted a glass there. Um, but uh, yeah, lots of different settings to go through. Um, one thing that's a little bit limiting on some of these paneling for the two panel, the three panel, is we can't really control the height on those at all. So they're really just fixed wherever they are set up. Um, what's actually interesting here is, you know, again, I know we had it set to uniform, but that top panel is not following our lower panel, probably because we're getting two options here that do not uh, apply or are not compatible. So you can see when we get down to these lower ones, like the louver, uh, that does come back. Um, so some of these, I guess, just are not compatible. Perhaps the size on that is just too small to squeeze it in. Um, so, okay, I do like the louver. That is kind of a nice um, option here. Uh, but let's go back to our full frame because that's kind of the default I've been working with. And I do like using our you know, mitered joinery. Um, there is an option here for going to a custom panel. Uh, most of the time when I click this, it goes to missing, I've found. Um, but if you change your segment type, you can actually go and see that, okay, that is supposed to be a custom panel. Um, but uh, yeah, once again, you gotta have those loaded in order for them to function. So, okay, let's move on to our next setting here, which is going to be our side panel. So with our side panel options here, we can turn this on. I'm going to rotate this so the wrong way just a little bit so we can see those side panels. Um, and so there's actually some different connection styles that we can choose here. So this style would actually take the face uh, doors and drawers or paneling, and it would actually extend it in front of the side panel. This option will take the side panel and extend it to match the front face of the front panels um, or this option here will kind of leave both of them trimmed back which is probably a good option to use um, we do have some options here for offsetting so we can take these and we can offset in the positive direction here just by sending it up three inches um, 
not sure where we would use that, uh, but we can send it down in the opposite direction as well. Uh, so that is one scenario where the offset will work in the negative. Just want to point that out. Okay, so those are the side panels. We can turn them on on all sides if we wanted to. Uh, the side panels do have their own uh, settings here. So um, if we click on the next arrow, then we can go through and pick and choose what side panels we are using. And um, I guess we need to go and define each of these individually. There is no option here for making all those uniform. So, um, so yeah, that's another thing to just pay attention to, but that gives us obviously a little more flexibility. All right, let's continue on and we will try to get through the rest of these settings here. So yeah, those are the side panels. Uh, we do have an option for a double face. So what is a double face? Well, it's essentially, if we enable this option, it's going to um, essentially take the segments that we've established from the front of our casework object, and it's going to match those segments on the back. So we can choose a uniform style there and it'll take whatever the lower style is and apply it. Um, I can see that it did remember our louvered uh, style from either our side panels or um, must have been from our side or rear panels. Um, but with this, we of course can go and set this back. Um, so lots of different options here for the rear. Uh, there are some limitations. Um, let's do a quick recap of our current um, settings here on the front. So we do have a door, a double hung door on the front, and we have currently a panel on the top. So um, instead of having this as a panel, if we actually had this as a drawer instead, let's jump over to our double face panel settings here and inspect what options we actually have. So um, you'll actually see under these, we do have our different segment types. So we can either choose a panel. Um, this would be for segment one. Um, we can actually, this is one of those cases where we can actually set this to a door. So if we wanted to match the settings on the front, we could have a double hung door on the front and the rear because it's that type of opening. On our segment two, which on the top side, we had a drawer on the front, we can only list this now as a panel. So depending on what's set on the front side, it will limit what we have on the back side. But there are some options here. If we go into our details and say, if we um, set this to like an open, then we can go into our settings here on the back and we can also set that to open and be able to see all the way through that object. So there's some different, you know, interesting things that we can do with the rear, or sorry, the double face segments, which really are the rear facing options for, um, you know, defining doors or paneling. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, lots of different options there. So um, hopefully that gives you a good overview of how we can use those. So let's go ahead and we'll turn those off and we will continue on. So, all right, let's move on to the knobs because the knobs here um, are one of those things that is kind of, you know, it's, it's nice, the new options, but at the same time, uh, there's some quirks on this that um, are not so great. But uh, to begin with, let's first start with our different knob styles. So we have our uh, kind of our single pole style. So we have, you know, different cylinders or squares, mushrooms, and so on. Um, we have some new linear options here as well. We kind of showed some of the uh, uh, edge mounted options. Um, I have found that there are some times where it's difficult to get these to stick directly to the edge that you want. Um, right now, like currently, um, we have this linear um, edge mounted to our base segment one. And for whatever reason, we can't set this so that it's on the inside. So I have found that, um, yeah, there's some limitations with these where we can mount them. Um, some will allow you to turn them on as, um, you know, to be on the, on the face, but it's not always... The case unfortunately so um so yeah 
just wanted to point that out. Uh, so yeah, lots of different options. You'll notice when we change the type, it will just kind of default back to a position, uh, whether it's a good position or not. Um, it's always good to pay attention to what your overall is here. Um, I often will look at this number. So this would be like 30 inches. And if I want these to end up on those frames, I would take 30 inches, divide it by two, and then subtract an inch would likely get me there. So 30 inches divided by two would be 15 inches and 14 inches would hopefully put that in, sorry, in our horizontal position, 14 inches would hopefully put that right on the frame if we wanted it to be there. And our vertical position here, probably like one foot six would get it um, at a little bit more reasonable elevation. So of course we can go in, select our segment two, and in this case probably Either leave it in the middle or potentially move it up if we wanted to. Okay, so those are the linear knobs. We do have some brand new options here for cutouts. So you'll see that we've already cut out some holes here, which is not really ideal when we are working with a front panel that has a frame on it. So, um, I mean, maybe there could be some cases uh, where that would work, um, but in most cases, we would probably want to just be using a simple shape if we are using any of these cutouts as knobs. So uh, once again, uh, those knobs, in this case, I would have preferred if it would jump back to its default position, um, but in this case, we can just kind of uh, set this back and try to get that in a position that feels a little better. Um, but yeah, different options here, either holes or we can do rectangular cutouts as well. Um, in this case, our segment one, we can choose whether it's the top, the bottom wouldn't make sense, maybe on a wall mount, top and bottom, that doesn't make sense. Um, but I'm not sure where the option is to put that on the edge. So. Um, yeah, one of those things that can be somewhat limiting. The other thing that I've found with the knobs that is limiting is we can't choose different knobs for different segments. So it's kind of one size fits all here. Uh, we can't do a single pull and a linear pull on different elements within there. Uh, so that is one of the things that hopefully um, we'll be able to adjust later on. Um, we can obviously choose our different segments, so why we can't choose different knobs um, for the different segments, I'm not sure, but hopefully that will be an option in the future. Um, so yeah, um, so that's the cut options. Uh, we do have some different bevel and OG options, um, which ultimately will leave us with an object that you can see into. So there's probably some cases where this may be uh, beneficial. Um, maybe not so much in like kitchen cabinets, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, most of the time we want things to be sealed up, I would say. Uh, just looks a little bit more finished. Um, and if you want that finished look, then go with the bottle nose, and that will allow us to um, get that little bit more finished look out of our objects. So, okay, we are kind of getting there here on our um, settings. Let's continue on. There's a few more to get through. Uh, definitely one of our longer videos here, but hopefully this is useful. Um, and okay, so here we are at our footing settings. So obviously we have our footing height, which should be relating to our project zero height as well. Um, we can set these as uh, you know, either cylinders, and once again, we can, you know, change the size on that. Uh, we can set these as uh, blocks or squares, and um, yeah, these footings can be very quirky. If we do change the size of our element, we are going to have to go into those settings there and make adjustments. That doesn't look so bad right there, but if I wanted it on the outside uh, as it was here when it was 30 inches wide, then um, yeah, I'd have to go in and start making adjustments. So let's do that here real quick because um, there are some things about the footings uh, that um, are good to point out. So we do have new nodes with the footings. Uh, one thing that kind of drives me a little crazy here is uh, they're connected when we move them in one direction, 
like in this case we can move both of the front ones forward and backwards but we cannot do that here uh, when spreading them out in this direction so um, this is one of those things where it's a little bit tough gotta use my 3d mouse to get in there just right um, it's one of those things where I try to get this as close as possible and then I try to jump in here to these settings and plug in a value that will actually align it if that is the the goal here so uh, one you know, what would this be this would be negative one foot five and so unfortunately I have to go through and do this for each and every element so a negative one or each and every leg negative one foot five one foot five and okay so there we go we now have those set and um, yeah that's one of those things that's just a little bit quirky but um, there are some other options here kind of hidden that you may not you know need or want uh, but we can crank up the number of legs here I'm not sure why we would want up to 15 legs uh, maybe there's some other uh, uses beyond like a typical casework cabinet to have several legs I'm thinking like some different uh, out-of-the-box furniture styles um, outside the box I should say not out of the box um, but yeah with these we can choose yeah, several different numbers of legs and uh, yeah that may or may not be useful to you so okay let's zero these out and we'll kind of get it back to you like a nice clean uh, setting there uh, one more setting here on the uh, on our footings we have an option here as well for adding a plinth to it which really just kind of fills in the uh, the base with a kind of a linear strip there so you can choose your thickness and um, yeah add those if you desire okay we are kind of getting to the end of it here that concludes everything that's part of our components we only have a few more settings to finish out here and a lot of these settings are um, really this is all the visualization side of it so this is the pens this is the line types and the representation on our plan view and um, yeah how these look with these different settings so one of the first things that I want to point out is we do have some different symbol types so if we want to add a kind of a dash through it um, we can go through and add those I like using just very thin lines there or I actually have a pen in uh, my template for um, for fixed casework like this um, so that is an option um, you can do an X there I like doing the X for the wall mounted just to give it a little bit more of a differentiation um, and yeah some of the other settings we have are we can turn on and off our opening symbol so we can either because we have both a drawer and uh, uh, doors here um, we can pick and choose which one we want to show so if it's a drawer we only have one it's only going to give us one uh, listing there if it's a double hung or if we want to choose our uh, the door components then we can select that there um, these previews are very much related to our segment details so if we start changing our door type say to sliding it will update that and um, yeah it will give us a sliding option as well but now that I've jumped back to double hung we can probably see here that okay actually our hand because we don't have handles there our handles are good so that's one benefit of using this style or no knobs at all I would say um, okay let's go back to representation and um, yeah so looking at this in 2d if you wanted a more simplified uh, outline here because um, right now we currently have you know really all the edges are turned on um, the, I think that's one of the settings that we actually lost is the ability to um, hide the lines on the edges here um, so in order to get around those you could either set that to like a, a white pen potentially or you could change our your uh, let's see the cabinet contour to like one of these dotted large space to kind of get those to disappear would be another option I don't mind having it turned on I kind of like seeing the outline and we can also see the dashed line here 
relating to our carcass contour. So, um, yeah, we have this dash dense. That would be the line indicating the size of our box there, which um, which I like seeing. So, um, yeah, what else do we have here to go through? We are almost finished with our settings here. Um, one thing to note is obviously we have a lot of settings here under our 3D representation. Um, actually not under here, but we can change our resolution here. If you have a lot of knobs and a huge project, then potentially drop this down a little bit in terms of the resolution. Um, that can be useful, probably not in this case because we don't have any knobs turned on. Um, but we do have all of the surface settings here, so this is where you can go through and adjust the cabinet, the shelves which are on the inside, the footing, and the drawer structures, and then our segment related uh, settings here which are going to be just our panels so our panels on the front if we switched up our panels to um, a different style like say let's go back to our framed then we're going to start getting more settings there um, and if we add our let's go back to our other knobs um, a bull nose with a frame panel probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, but if we add our, lint, our knobs back in and we jump down to our representation, you can see, well, our knobs are now up top here, part of this general surfaces. And then we have our segments with our different panels or the panel insets. Um, if you're using one with a mullion, I think you get the option for the, the mullion, the inset, and the panel frame as well so lots of different options here um and yeah at this point i think we are pretty much getting to the end of the new settings um yeah this is going on to be almost an hour long video which is uh, a lot packed into it hopefully this is all useful info for you um the last few settings here we do have a minimal space uh, right now we are not seeing that because our model view options currently are not set for that but if we turn on our clearance checks and we jump back into those settings there then you can see the minimum clearance um, the other thing i was going to point out that i did not quite get to yet is part of our work environment profile so if you go into uh, i think it's one of these like more options i want to say um oh, where is it somewhere in these settings there's an option for showing contours on favorites and library part previews. So if you have this enabled, that is the setting there in the work environment that will actually allow you to see all the contours of your casework object, which will be able to you know, give you just a little bit more visual feedback when you're going through those settings and making uh, changes um, yeah, live there in the object settings. So if we didn't have those turned on, then we wouldn't be able to see our joinery types and we'd lose some of the other details as well. So yeah, that's how we can get these contours coming through. Um, it does help a lot when you have white objects. Um, having those contours turned on, you can see the definition of those in the preview much, much better. Okay, last setting here I want to talk about is our connections. So um, here obviously we have different hot cold and wastewater connections uh, we can add these regardless of whether we have a sink and um, counter and tap in our in our object so uh, it's good to just go through set your kind of standard sizing for these connections so that when you do decide to go and turn them on they're where they are and they're the right size and um, they are set to the right MEP system. So, okay, I think that is probably it for now on these casework objects. Uh, there's certainly a lot more that we could go through and that we could talk about. Um, really, we've been focusing entirely on just one of the objects, the base cabinet block. Um, but pretty much all of these settings will apply to our other objects for our kitchen casework as well. Uh, let's just do a quick overview and then we'll wrap this video up here. So um, yeah, I'm trying to think of what else to point out when it comes to the casework. So um, yeah, you can just see all the different styles here. Um, yeah, I think that probably is good enough 
overview of the casework objects for the moment. Um, and yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I will say if you are modifying lots of versions and different styles at once, um, it does help to kind of, I found to go through and um, do your selection and then go in and uh, work within the representation settings here. Um, I will say that when you do make some of these adjustments, it can override some other settings here. So let's just play with this real quick. Um, say, for example, if we wanted to change our uh, surface on our segments here, we could come in here. Let's go set this to like a walnut vertical and we can set those size, the, the sizing there. Looks like that one might be not how I wanted it. Let's set that to vertical. We can go in, we'll set our box, our drawer structure, we can leave white, that's fine. So just by changing nothing but surfaces here, uh, and this is all the surface settings that we have, because we selected this object last, um, I found that this can be a shortcut, um, if this works right, um, so that we don't have to apply those settings to every single segment in some of these more complicated ones. Um, so that is a little trick there for applying uh, these settings kind of across the board. You will notice that just by changing the surface, we did lose the, let's actually undo that and we'll bring it back. Um, we did lose the panel type, or did we? Sorry, maybe, maybe I'm mistaken here. Let's redo that. No, we definitely did lose the panel type that we had there. We had the louvered panel turned on. Uh, just by changing that surface, it did uh, override that panel type. And so now it's still sli it still is a sliding type, but we, uh, yeah, now it's all the same frame type. So uh, did want to point that out. Um, but yeah, that does help. If we had gone through and say, let's undo this once again. And if we had ended on an element that has like four segments, like this drawer structure, and um, we wanted to go through and change the representation and the settings here, we'd have to go through and update those for all four segments there. So that would be a little bit more time consuming. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit easier to grab a simplified object and override those, uh, those surfaces. And then, uh, yeah, that did work for us and it applied it to everything as you can see in that one step so uh so yeah it's uh, one of those things that um still has a few little quirks for making those updates but it uh certainly beats going through changing each object individually uh, before we get here to the end i think we could probably let's try one more change to all of these objects um let's go into our knobs and let's switch it over from like uh we're on a linear let's go to like an elbow knob and let's set this to, I don't know, brass. Let's just get it to pop out. I'm curious to see if it's going to adjust our positioning on the knob position. Hopefully not. Okay, so it didn't. It did keep those in the position where we wanted them. And so um, I believe it did. This one may have been uh, not in an ideal position to begin with. But... Nonetheless, we can go through, and if I can get this right, let's see, our X position, this would be probably a one foot two would be good, and then we can take this, drag these up to, oh, I need to stick on there, the Y position, uh, yeah, maybe one foot seven might put it in a nice position for reaching. Okay, I'm actually going to wrap up this video this time. Uh, there is more detail and little tips and tricks that I have included in the blog that I've written. So I'll post a link to that in the description. And um, yeah, hopefully this uh, video is useful to you and points out some tips and tricks for how to use these new casework objects. 
And um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. We will catch you on another video here soon. If you like this type of content, make sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest contraband tutorials. And uh, yeah, if you are looking for any Archicad tools or training, check out contrabim.com is the place where we post everything we do. All right, we will catch you on another video soon. Thanks for watching and uh, talk to you on the next video.